Good evening. I'm Phil Slattery, publisher of The Chamber Magazine. I'm here with a quick introduction to myself and to The Chamber. The Chamber publishes dark contemporary short fiction and poetry, as well as interviews, reviews, and anything else that I think may be entertaining and useful to my readers. I started The Chamber in late November 2016, but I more or less toyed and experimented with it for a few years as I learned to build a website. In December 2020, as I closed in on finishing a novel that is still unfinished, I knew that two problems I would be faced with were, first of all, finding an agent, and second, finding readers. After several days of contemplation, I realized that having an established magazine would solve both problems. And my understanding is that agents generally look for not just an author's books he has to peddle, but they also look at his literary resume and writing credentials, which makes good business sense. They want to know that they will be representing a professional with a potential for bringing in Boku Bucks. Depending on the success of the magazine, the agent could also see my taste in literature, and knowing that I have good taste, he could be confident that I could also write good material. Having a magazine would also mean that I had an established readership of sorts. They wouldn't be reading my works, of course, but once I had a novel published, I would be able to promote it in my magazine, as well as on my personal website and on any website that the publishing house develops. Therefore, in December 2020, I started taking submissions and seriously promoting the chamber. Now I find that running this magazine is its own reward. I am becoming addicted to publishing short fiction and poetry, and running this website and all the associated social media and operations and stuff that comes with it. It is really fun. I get to read excellent, truly excellent fiction and poetry and publish it so that others around the world may enjoy it too. I'm also finding out that I get to work with many excellent people. I am not, a, by nature, a people person. So if I say I work with excellent people, you can rest assured that they are excellent people. I have not yet encountered anyone so disagreeable that I had to actually tolerate his or her presence, even if it was only via email. Now, you may wonder why I chose dark fiction and poetry to be the focus of this magazine, and why the genres range so widely when most magazines focus on one or on a narrow range of genres. In December 2020, when I was developing the concept of the magazine, I had learned from experience to go with my strengths. For some time, I examined myself trying to nail down a strength I could use. Then one day, and I don't remember exactly how, I came to a realization. My friends have always said that I had a dark sense of humor and that I was interested in dark things. As a matter of fact, I like to wear dark colors, which is why you see me in this. This is not normally how I dress in the evening, but for this video, I thought I'd, I'd doll up a little bit. But anyway, as I said, I came to a realization. As I said, my friends have always said I have a dark sense of humor and that dark subjects interest me. So combining that with an interest in horror literature that I had picked up over the previous several years, I decided to focus the magazine on material of a dark nature. That would be the primary cri criterion. So long as it is dark, it can be of any genre. Then I wouldn't attract readers of just one genre, I would attract readers from all genres, meaning I would have the potential for a huge readership. I then started contemplating how I could have as big a readership as possible. I thought about the nature of the internet. Anything published on the internet goes out to every time zone on the planet. English is the lingua franca of the modern world. In addition to the US, Britain, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand and the former British colonies, speakers of English are scattered around the globe. English is the second most spoken language in India, for example. I've encountered speakers of English in Pakistan and Egypt. I've been to 
24 countries in my time, and I've encountered, encountered speakers of English in every one of them. And in practically every nation in Europe, English, if it's not the second language, certainly ranks near the top. It is spoken in nations as diverse as Iceland and Polynesia. Therefore, to bring in readers from around the world, I would have to bring in writers from around the world, which would enrich the diversity of the material being published. And in my experience, a great part of my enjoyment of reading has always been reading material from around the world and vicariously experiencing new cultures and lands. Now, having an international readership also plays to my strengths. My undergraduate degree, a BA, was a double major in German and Russian. As part of my degree program, I had to read a lot of German and Russian literature, as well as the usual required English and American lit classes. I also read a lot more German literature later on when I was studying for a master's in German. Unfortunately, I never finished that program. I joined the Navy before receiving my degree. However, while in the Navy, I expanded my reading and read a lot of American and English lit that I hadn't in college, and I read some novels from a few other nations as well. For about 10 years, I also developed a passion for reading and writing poetry, some of which can still be found floating around in the backwaters of the internet. When I left college, I had no idea of how I would use my degrees. I was not enamored of teaching and had not done well teaching as a graduate assistant. Translation would have bored me to tears. When I joined the Navy, I left the ivory tower and academia behind, but I still continued to attend classes in assorted languages whenever I could. Ironically, I'm now using my degree, which many people can't say, although not in the way that I had imagined. I seldom have an opportunity to use my language skills, but I am now, as a publisher, using the literary skills that I developed. Every year, the Chamber has readers from over a hundred nations, although I have contributors from only about a dozen or so regularly. But those contributing nations vary greatly. In addition to authors from the English-speaking nations, I have published writers from Argentina, Brazil, Romania, Malta, Japan, Singapore, the Philippines, and others. It's because of the globally diverse readership and the superb quality of the contributions that the Chamber continues to grow. If nothing else, there is one point that I definitely want to get across. It is my privilege and honor to work with the talented authors and poets who contribute to my humble periodical. All that having been said, I will leave off here so that I have things to talk about in future episodes. I hope to produce these little videos occasionally. It'll be sporadically, at least for a while. I don't see is it happening regularly. Uh, my schedule prohibits that right now, but I hope to do it more frequently in any case. And you may see some, you'll see some other little videos popping up now and then that as I learn to develop videos, I'll develop some ambiance videos and some others. And eventually I'll start having interviews here. I intend to use YouTube for, to its full advantage and I hope to like start con to do, uh, conducting interviews with authors via Zoom or in person, which I can then load up to this, uh, to this channel. So that's all I have for right now. Take care. Have a good day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you for your time. Have a nice day.